am Christina Lyles and welcome to my presentation. Today I'm going to be going over my internship experience at Cronin. So here's the agenda. We're going to go a little over a little bit about me, the internship itself, my work, and my overall reflections. So again, I'm Christina and I was a customer experience and consumer insights intern at Cronin. I'm an incoming senior at UNT. I study technical communication. Uh, my focus is user experience or customer experience. I also really love information architecture and tech writing. And I'm also a grad track student through the UNT TechCom department. So getting the internship, the hunt for the internship started around December of 2020 and went all the way till April when I got my offer from Cronin. Um, the thing that ultimately got me the job was definitely Dr. Kim's posting of um, the job position on LinkedIn. So checking that profile regularly was something I did nearly every day. I applied to over 50 internships and I got rejected from most of them. I only heard back from a few, including Cronin, and I only interviewed with maybe a handful of companies. So I did get discouraged pretty easily sometimes. So it was really important for me to remember that rejection is just redirection. And I had to remember to stay confident in my skills and my expectations. Another thing that really helped me was updating my portfolio and resume regularly. Also being ready to make a cover letter. So the internship, this lasted from June to August. So I worked for Cronin. Cronin is a creative marketing agency out of Connecticut. So this was a remote internship. I've laid out a few different departments and services that Cronin offers. I was in the strategy and planning space um, within the customer experience and insights uh, department. But they also have other really neat services in the creative space and marketing application space. And I learned a lot about those as well. Here are a few companies that Cronin has worked with. So really cool stuff here. <laughs> okay, moving on to my job duties. Um, I've divided them into four categories. We have research, document and analyze, create and collaborate, and write and revise. And these four categories basically make up um, the meat of what I did throughout this internship. Research was the biggest one for sure. I conducted a lot of secondary research. I had immense exposure to very valuable um, company IDIs and discussion guides and audios and videos of qualitative research. I also had a lot of exposure to how quantitative surveys are made um, when they go live, the aftermath of such and analyzing that data. Which brings me to my next point. I did analyze some of this raw data and made them into data tables and visuals for some presentations. I also did a big documentation project over user behavior analysis and their findings, which I will go over in a few slides. I did a lot of creating and collaborating. I used Figma on a personal level to help my coworkers make some graphics and visuals for presentations. There was a lot of collaborating with content strategists, brand specialists, and copywriters. I also had the privilege of attending some really neat UX advanced research workshops and sessions that I got a lot of good notes on. Writing and revising, I was lucky enough to take the lead on writing my own project brief at one point, which was great. I proofread a lot of reports and proposals and presentations, which involved me editing here and there. And I also wrote a lot of summaries um, of my secondary research findings to make them into usable insights to help my coworkers. So here's my team. As you can see in the blue, um, Miss Katie Lucas was my direct supervisor this summer. She was absolutely great. And I also collaborated a lot with Annie and Kevin, qualitative insights and quantitative insights. So I, I got both sides of the research and it was fantastic. So my work environment, my work environment was fully remote and with that came a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom. So discipline was a must. Um, I, I really had to make sure I was using my, tam my time management. I took initiative on a lot of things and I, I really had to make sure 
I was organized with all that freedom. It was also very trusting. Uh, you know, again, being remote, it was great to have worker coworkers and Katie really trust me and my work and know that I would get it done like I said I would. The environment was also very creative. It was lots of brainstorming. Pretty much every meeting, it was just so fun to be a part of because everyone was just going back and forth with all these ideas and things like that. It was just a very creative atmosphere. And for me as an intern, it was very encouraging and supportive, whether I was in a meeting with my department or my team or not, I felt very welcomed and supported. So here is a slide of some best practices and tools that I implemented throughout the internship. I'll start off on the work side. I had weekly meetings with my supervisor. Um, I took lots of notes. I can't stress enough how much that helped me take notes, especially um, when I talked to my supervisor. Um, I used my own Trello board to make sure that I was on task with all of the projects I was multitasking. On the personal side, it was a must for me to network and build relationships, as well as ask a lot of questions from, you know, me being the intern, I had so many, and also challenge myself every day. Some software I used, some specific ones I want to go over is Mila Board. It was a content management system that was fantastic to use. I'm going to use it again. And this is where I housed all of my secondary research. Very easy to use. I use a little bit of Envision to help Annie with some wireframing, Figma on a personal level, Hotjar, and Dovetail. Hotjar was fantastic. It's a software that houses thousands of user recordings and heat maps for different websites. And Dovetail is also kind of like a CMS. And this housed all of our team's um, really long research sessions. So all the video, audio, and writing on that as well. Okay, my work. We're going to go over the user behavior analysis first. I used Excel and Hotjar, and the goal of this assignment was for me to watch user recordings and take note of the significant ones. And basically, we were wanting to see if how a certain button was functioning on the landing page. Was it working? Was it not? Why? And we wanted to get some quantitative number on that. So that's where I came in. I decided to create an Excel document for this project and I'm going to show you it now. Okay, so this is Hotjar and as you can see, it houses thousands of user recordings. I can look at heat maps, other things like that. If you click play, it just takes you through a user's activity. Okay, so here is the documentation of my Excel document. I basically took every single significant interaction from each of these user recordings and categorized them into different categories that would be helpful to know um, for Annie and Katie. I also created some sort of standardization for tags. I, I tagged each video. I am nowhere near done. This is an ongoing project, but it was very, very valuable, insightful, and fun. Okay, next we had a competitor review. I love competitor reviews. I used Word for this, and the goal of this assignment was to review and analyze direct competitor websites to find best practices, consistent features, and areas of open space that DHH can really stand out in. So I'll show you that now. I took a screenshot analysis approach for this particular assignment. So I went through each direct competitor. How did I find them? Was it an ad? Was it not the link? I you know, had very detailed findings here and justifications. I also had appeal and turn off bullet points as well. And here are my screenshots, each competitor, there we go. This was a very fun assignment. Okay, next are my reflections. So what I learned, I learned so, so much. I could not fit this all in one slide. The very first thing I learned definitely was just being in a team, not only within my specific team, but working with other departments, the creative side, the marketing side, the brand, uh, the, the the brain strategist and the writers and the strategists all coming together, it was 
just amazing just to watch, sit back and watch them interact and communicate was a learning experience in itself. And seeing what expertise and skills were required for each different position was awesome. I also learned a lot about being independent working. And with that came a lot of confidence. I I felt very confident in myself being in a remote atmosphere. And I, you know, I was able to really focus and um, have that freedom to flex my creative skill set, which was great. I also learned a lot about strategy and business. I, I had not known a ton about UX strategy before this internship, but With this internship, I saw the whole life cycle of a project and the whole life cycle of consumer experience and user experience and the strategy behind that and focusing on that business goal. And, you know, this is a client based uh, company. So I I saw how the agency worked as well. And with that came a lot of analytical skills dealing with quantitative data, research skills, you know, sitting in on research sessions and looking over those results and problem solving skills, just in general, again, every meeting there was a problem and everyone was just spewing out ideas of how we can solve it. It was great. Biggest challenges. I know I said I loved being remote, but also it was a challenge at first. You know, I didn't have direct supervision and that was scary. I also wasn't able to build as many relationships outside of my team as I'd wanted to. It was also really hard for me to understand what some of my coworkers were talking about. They used jargon and expert level verbiage in business terms of really niche clients and services. I had to do a lot of research on to understand. What I would change. I I really would love to experience an in-person or hybrid internship next time. So if that was an option, I would have loved that. Um, Another thing I would have changed is definitely more opportunity to opportunity to network and communicate with my other interns. I I wish I got more time with them and just my other coworkers in general. Classes that helped me. I went through my my UNT and went through each tech comm class I've taken and these were the top ones. Some of them don't exactly correlate to customer experience and that's the point. I think it was just the exposure of each and every one of these classes that made me understand everyone's position at Cronin, whether that was creative or strategy or marketing, all of these helped me in some way. Professional and technical communication really helped me get exposure to each different side of tech comm. And I think that was the foundation of the way I think now when it comes to um, technical communication. Visual technical communication was by far my favorite tech comm class thus far. I learned a lot about the principles of design and I've applied that to everything as far as not just being creative, but the strategy side of things. And also, I mean, I created this PowerPoint template myself. So visual tech comm, thank you. Editing technical documents. I did a lot of editing throughout this internship and this helped me really find the nitty gritty things of grammar and formatting and the expectations and standards of a good technical document. Topics and technical communication was probably my second favorite class. I learned the ins and outs of UX and this definitely helped me survive this internship. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kim, and thank you to the TechCom faculty for joining me in this presentation.